See that coming towards you? Well, that is Barrett. He is my two-year-old Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and he is both loyal and a little bit crazy. I definitely couldn't have asked for a better adventure buddy. I owe him a lot, so we're going to take this landlocked Alberta dog and we're going to bring him to the BC coastlines. Come along as we overland this pup all the way to his first ocean swim. We've been driving for three hours now. Uh, it's the first day of the trip, the 21st of July. Uh, the goal is to get all the way to Vancouver Island. But first, the BC Overland Rally. Let's get up to speed. So me and Barrett have eight days together. And in that eight days, we plan on doing a lot of things. But first, we're on our way to Merritt, BC for the BC Overland Rally. It's a nine hour drive, which from Edmonton, we have to make our way about two and a half hours and then work our way all the way through Jasper National Park. Kings and thieves are running the same these days, I know. Everybody enjoys adventure differently. I'm taking in the views. I think he's just wondering where we're going. Wayne's probably going to be a big factor on this trip, but I'm well prepared for it, and honestly, Barrett kind of enjoys it. That elk crossing the road was a good sign for us to pull over, take a break, get in the scenery, and then take some photos. We got a schedule to keep though, so it's back on the road. Sometime in the future, I'd love to come back and spend some time in some of these towns that you find along the way. There's just so many neat things to see in Western Canada. Roughly nine hours of straight driving later, we finally made it to the campground of the B Corps Overland Rally. With a bit of luck, I bumped into Dave, otherwise known as Blind Man Overland, and he just happened to have a spot parked right beside him that I could camp in. After catching up, it was finally time to get some sleep. After a good rest, it was finally time to grab the first view of the BC Overland Rally. 
let's make some breakfast and then start our day. This weekend was going to be a hot one and it turns out it was going to be pretty dusty too. So what better way to start your morning than hopping in the river? Me and Barrett have been overlanding for about two years now. And this will be the second expo that we get to attend. This will be me and Barrett's first time attending the BC Overland Rally. And I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to meet more people and learn more in this community. Everyone seems to love an adventure pup and Barrett he loves the attention, so even though he's here for the dogs, we decided we'd let him take the point of view of this expo. One of the things I love about expos is you really get the chance to bump into people that you might have been following or talked to on the social media networks. For us, Four Season Explorer, High Ground by Nightfall, and Van City Adventures were all people that we had known in the virtual world, but finally got to meet in person, catch up, learn a few things, and have a few laughs. There's also trail runs, courses, and giveaways that you can all participate in. The vendors can range from big companies to mom and pop shops, but everybody's friendly, and everybody wants to get a little pet in with Barrett. After a pretty full day of excitement, it was time to get Barrett back to the river to cool him off and then head back to the truck to just kind of rest the feet, get some food in you, and get ready for the night's activities. Guest speakers are a great way to spread knowledge across the community, and Fire Rosie on tour had some great adventures to share. Then it was time for the raffle. Okay, I'll avoid the fire. It was a pretty busy day for Barrett, so I placed him to bed, spent the night talking with friends, and then got some rest, because tomorrow it was up and early to continue our journey. First thing in the morning, we headed down the river with Dave and Zeus. It was great to see Zeus get some swimming in with Barrett. Barrett has a way of pulling all dogs into the water, I guess. After packing up camp, it was time to say goodbye and hit the road. Me and Barrett had a solid six hour drive ahead of us today and it was time to start the next part of this adventure. Well, maybe right after this baby deer crosses the road. Okay, now it's time to start the adventure. Today's goal is to go from Merritt, BC to the start of the Hurley Trail up in the Kootenays. Let's see what happens. Scenery here is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to come back when I have more time and explore more this entire region. But we have a little bit of a problem. Up ahead, you can start to see some smoke. There's been a lot of fires in BC and Alberta this year. I really hope my route isn't getting diverted by a fire.
good news is the fire was on the other side of one of these mountains and wouldn't stop us from being able to pass through. As we kept going up, the views kept getting more and more amazing and the roads kept getting a little bit more narrower. The plan was to drive through an old mining tunnel. Unfortunately, it had been closed due to all the fires this season. So instead, I spotted a trail that kept going up and decided, ah, we got some time, let's check it out. So after watching the wildlife and taking a little break, we continued our upwards adventure. I try and keep in mind that I've never been here, I have no idea where this goes, and I'm not even 100% sure where I am. But that's part of the adventure, isn't it? Exploring, finding new things, and seeing what happens. I started having one of those moments where you started questioning your decisions with the trail getting a lot more narrow and my F-150 truly feeling its size. I was just hoping that beyond these trees was a spot that I could turn around. Turns out that Barrett's still my lucky charm because up on the top of this trail was a campground. I don't know how long this thing's been here. It looked like nobody's really been here in a long time. But this lake on top of this mountain, what a spot. Had to be saved for a future occasion. We took a little break, ate some lunch, 
and then got ready to climb all the way back down the mountain. Now that spot was nice, and as we made our way down, avoiding that guy, we came across the next spot that had a jaw-dropping view. I could stay looking at this view forever, and I'm sure Barrett could keep playing in the water for a good amount of time too. But it's not really my style when I'm camping solo to camp out in the open. So it was time to go find a crop of trees that we could park ourselves in and set up camp. After I made sure I didn't just stumble across a murder scene, we decided to pull around back up the hill a bit and set up camp up in the tree line. Morning came and we made our way to the start of the Hurley Trail. That should bring us all the way to Pembleton and that much closer to the goal of bringing Barrett to the ocean. With no service, we double checked our maps, aired down and started our way. Immediately, the views again did not disappoint. So we're just riding on the Hurley uh, Forestry Trunk Trail right now. Um, still have to get to Pembleton, Whistler, and then figure out what time we're taking the ferry over to Vancouver Island. That's shaky. There we go. All right. It's pretty important that we make it through the Hurley and all the way to the coastline to reach the ferry by at least 1 p.m. today. Let's see what happens. The reason why this is important is because at this point, we only have three nights left on this trip before we have to make it from Vancouver Island all the way back to Edmonton and return to our normal daily lives. Keeping all those facts in mind, I still have a spare two, three hours I can work with to explore the off trails of the Hurley, as long as everything goes smoothly, that is.
Discovering another hidden campsite deep off the main trail has me believing that BC is full of these hidden campsites. After telling myself that there was no more time to explore, I spotted one last trail that I just had to check out. Although this trail had plenty of room for my truck, I did have to really watch where I was placing my wheels. I can't afford to break down right now. I got a time limit and I'm solo and one broken part could set back my entire trip. All in all, things were going okay. I did have a few moments where my rear bumper would touch the ground, but we made it up here and again, the sights were something to see. I really can understand why people love going on these off trails and finding new places to other camp or off road. There's something really fun about it, even with a little bit of risk of getting stuck. Although I was having a lot of fun up here, I did notice that the rain had finally caught up with us. And I really should make it back to the main road and start making our way towards the ferry. But not before I need to grab a few good photos for the memories. Finally, we started to descend out of the Hurley Trail. All we had to do was air back up and be back on the road. Mud hose doesn't have a, um, a meter on it, but because my truck is fairly new, I could just watch it fill up on there. Hi, Bear. What's up, buddy? You just ready to go?
not gonna lie, all this rain out here in Whistler, it's either gonna make my dust paint job horrible or it's gonna clean off everything. With the ocean now in view, it felt like everything was going on track. We've had such a great time up till now, I can't wait to see Barrett get on the ferry. But as we all know, things don't always go the way we hoped they would. It turns out, and I didn't know this and I should have looked it up, that Unless you get reservation tickets, you have to wait a long time to take the ferry over to Vancouver Island. My leave time is 8.30, it is 2.44, and it is pouring rain. Good times. What do you think, Bear? Waiting for a boat ride? You don't care, do you? You're just sleeping. We have been waiting for four hours for the ferry. And we got three and a half hours more wait to go. This is where we're waiting. It's just over there. Half a day lost. We'll make up for it tomorrow. Only two more hours to go. Well, we finally made it to the loading spot. We missed the ferry by a few cars and had to wait until the 10.30 ferry. So I took Barrett down to the shoreline, not to swim, but just to get in the smells. My original plan on the island was to drive about four more hours today, but now I need to start researching where we'll camp as soon as we land, as it's going to be about 1, 1.30 in the morning. During the wait, I ended up booking our return ticket for the ferry, so at least we have that covered now. And I found a campsite that would be open around 1 in the morning that's only about 40 minutes from the landing on Vancouver Island. Finally, it was our turn to board the ferry. Even though we had a slight setback, I was pretty excited to get on the ferry and just see how Barrett would react. It was like watching every gene in his genetics of being a water dog kick in with excitement all at the same time. With the island finally in view and the sun setting in the distance, it was time to get ourselves ready to go find camp as the next part of this adventure begins. Finally arriving on the east side of Vancouver Island, we were both ready at these early hours in the morning to get some rest. Thank you. 
Despite getting to bed around 1.30 in the morning, we were up and ready to go. There was a lot of island to explore and we had a lot of distance to travel. Part of my plan was to travel as far north as possible, about a six hour drive and camp on the coastlines. All of this construction you see, well, it's going to turn out to be a bigger problem for me than I expected. But for now, we were going to take a little detour. We were told by friends on Instagram that there was a waterfall out here that we just had to see, quite literally named the hole in the wall. And as always, you can expect Barrett to dive right into the next adventure. After cooling off, I was pretty confident Barrett would sleep his way for the next six hours up north. But then, I got the news. It turns out that all the wildfires and high winds that have been happening this season had caused constant landslides along the highway on Vancouver Island, which actually caused all the highways I was going to use to be closed until further notice making us need to reevaluate our entire trip on the island. We backtracked south a little bit along the east coast, and then I found us what I believe was a forestry trunk road running above the Green Mountain Wildlife Management Area. So we decided to take it. We would use this trail, go across the island to the west coast. Even though we'd only put in about five hours of driving today, the late night sleep we had last night finally caught up to us. So up on top of this little ridge with this amazing view and the rain clouds starting to pass, we decided to make camp here and just catch up on some rest. Vancouver Island, you've made it pretty clear, pretty quick, that we're gonna have to take a few trips back in the future to see everything that you have to offer.
dinner, relaxing, and the biggest slug I've ever seen later. It was finally time for us to just put up our feet as tomorrow would be the big day at the ocean. Hard to believe that this is day seven of our trip. The final full day we have to enjoy it before our last sleep on the island and tomorrow our eighth day where we head all the way back to Edmonton all in one 24 hour span. The last couple of hours that we put in making it to the west coast today just had so much to offer. The most unique trees and greenery I've ever seen, as well as just some beautiful waters. Finally, breaking through the tree line, there it was, the southwest coast with Washington State on the horizon. I can't wait to get down there and jump into the ocean. With a little bit of back and forth searching, we finally found the trail that brings you down to the popular Sombrero Beach. A amazing beach with a few awesome hiking trails and a hidden secret if you can find it. With the moment that this whole trip was based on, only a few hundred meters away, it was finally time to let this purebred water dog dive right in for his first swim in the ocean. After a couple of hours of playing in the surf, it was time to go find this hidden waterfall that a few people had told me about. With a little help from some of the locals, it wasn't too hard to find, but you definitely have to look. What's this? Bear, what's this? Come here.
After an amazing day, we had to hit the road and get a little bit closer to where we'd pick up the ferry in the morning. We found this great campsite just on the shoreline and decided we'd stay here just one hour from the port. I spent the afternoon chatting with other out-of-towners like myself as we all enjoyed watching the coastline. And if you thought bear could be tired of swimming, well, you might not know your Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. Once we watched a very beautiful sunset, it was time to climb up in the rooftop tent and get our last sleep before heading home tomorrow. As we were greeted by the sunrise at 6 in the morning and I quietly tried to pack up not to disturb anybody, an American bald eagle decided he'd make the noise for me. And as we shift into drive, our final day begins. We have a two hour ferry ride landing in Vancouver before making about a 13 hour drive all the way back to Edmonton. I really don't get a lot of opportunities to take a trip with just me and my dog like this and I can't believe how well everything turned out. Yeah, we had some hiccups, but that's all part of the journey and these memories, they'll last a lifetime. Me and Barrett would love to meet all of you as we continue more of these adventures. So please drive safe, adventure respectfully, and we will see you out there somewhere in the wild. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please let us know. Hit a like button and subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you out having adventures.